With the release of Season 2 of The Mandalorian right around the corner, we thought it would be the perfect time to thaw ourselves out from carbonite, ready those blasters, armor up, and... Uh, oh, uh, excuse me, please don't touch that. Here's your IMDb cheat sheet for Season 1 of The Mandalorian. <laughs> Set five years after Return of the Jedi, we meet the Mandalorian, a feared and respected bounty hunter with no name who always gets his man. I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. And he really, really likes putting people in carbonite. Mando gets word from Grief Karga that a high-paying client and former Empire general is looking for a mysterious 50-year-old bounty who can be brought back dead or alive. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. To sweeten the deal, they offer a bar of Beskar steel, which is sacred to the Mandalorians, who were forced into hiding because of the Empire. And those bars can be melted down to make highly durable body armor, thanks to the armorer. Mando tracks down the target on a planet where he also meets the wise Ugnaught Queel, a former Imperial indentured servant who also has his own catchphrase. I have spoken. And just so happens to be voiced by People Magazine's 1992 sexiest man alive, Nick Nolte. They locate the target in a heavily defended encampment. With the help of the extremely flexible bounty hunter droid, IG-11, they clear out the base and finally discover that bounty. An adorable little child that looks a lot like Yoda. The asset was to be terminated. And Mando's heart grew three sizes that day. I mean, how could he not? Just look at the thing with the big ears and the big Disney eyes and it's Disney. Plus, Mando just really hates droids. Mostly because droids were responsible for killing off his family during the Clone Wars. After fending off some other bounty hunters also trying to capture the child, the Mandalorian returns to his ship to discover that it's been picked apart by those pesky Jawas. <laughs> Mando reluctantly agrees to retrieve a mudhorn egg for the Jawas in exchange for the stolen parts of his own ship, which is such a raw deal. Well, turns out this mudhorn is all kinds of pissed off and muddy and puts a real hurting on the Mandalorian. Luckily, the child uses the Force to levitate the beast, enabling Mando to finish it off. It's then Mando begins to wonder, wait, how is this child 50 years old? He then delivers the child to the client and collects his bounty, which he invests in a serious armor upgrade. But all this cool shiny armor is kind of pointless because he kind of misses that cute 50-year-old baby that can move things with its mind. Armed with his new bounty hunter gear and a heart full of love, he breaks into the client's safe house, kills some stormtroopers, and rescues the child who's being experimented on. But on his way back to his ship, he's ambushed by Grief Karga and other bounty hunter guild members. Pinned down, he's luckily saved by his fellow Mandalorians and is able to escape. This is the way. This is the way. Mando and the child go full-blown lone wolf and cub to find sanctuary on the relatively quiet planet of Sorgan. But he's attacked by ex-rebel shock trooper Cara Dune as the child casually watches, becoming the dankest of memes. Cara and Mando make a truce and are hired to protect a farming village from a band of raiders and an ATST. Mando reveals some backstory to Omera, a widowed mother at the village, that no living being has seen him without his helmet since he was an orphaned foundling taken in and trained by the Mandalorians. And you know, this little village seems like a perfect safe spot to leave the child, but it totally isn't because bounty hunters. Then they'll keep coming. So after taking some damage in a spaceship dogfight, Mando emergency lands on Tatooine for a quick repair. He leaves the child with this stranger with candy and heads over to the Moss Eisley Cantina, best known for that one time that smuggler guy clearly shot first. Sitting in a familiar spot, the arrogant Toro Calican convinces Mando to help capture a high reward elite bounty. Mando kinda figures, it's a trap, but agrees to help anyway. I mean, hey, ship repairs and babysitting ain't cheap. Naturally, Toro turns on Mando after he learns the bounty on him and the child is way higher. But Toro's a scrub and Mando easily shoots him and saves the child. Later, the Mandalorian receives word from former partner Ran Mulk about some bounty work. Teaming up with some seriously questionable allies, like this guy with three guns, devil alien guy who's big and strong, bug-looking droid, and the knife-twirling Shion, who has a little history with Mando. Nice to see you too. <laughs> He agrees to infiltrate a Rebellion prisoner ship and break out Shion's brother, Quinn. But do we even have to say it at this point? It's a trap! The crew double-crosses Mando and lock him in a cell, but he easily escapes and locks them in a cell. Sensing that Ran Malk is in on this double-cross, Mando tricks some X-Wings to fly in and shoot up his space station. Cross-wipe to next adventure. Mando receives a message from Grief Karga, asking for help to kill the client and clear out Navarro of Imperial forces by using the child as bait. 
He enlists the help of Cara Dune, Queel, and a reprogrammed nice version of IG-11. But hey, guess what? It's a trap! The plan was to kill you and take the kid. However, Grief double, triple, quadruple, whatever turns and decides to work with Mando to take out the rest of the Imperial troops. Queel takes the child to safety while Mando, Cara, and Grief try to take out the client head on. I would like to see the baby. Unfortunately, super bad guy Moff Gideon totally saw that coming after already capturing the child and killing Queel. Hey, that's sad. Moff and his army of stormtroopers shoot up the bar, killing the client, trapping our heroes inside, and Moff reveals Mando's real name. The decommissioned Mandalorian hunter, Din Djarin. Luckily, the child is saved by Nurse IG-11, who puts a massive hurting on all those stormtroopers. Thankfully, stormtroopers have notoriously bad aim. The gang tries to wild bunch out of the situation, but they all get pinned down again. After almost getting blown up, Mando is all kinds of hurt and just tells the others to escape through the underground Mandalorian enclave. Realizing that there's a little loophole in the Mandalorian rulebook, Mando takes off his helmet in front of IG-11 because he's technically not a living thing. IG-11 sprays his wounds with this magical droid healing juice that it makes his brain think good again. That was a joke. It is meant to put you at ease. <laughs> Mando catches up with the rest of the group to find out all of the other Mandalorians in the underground enclave have been wiped out, except for the armorer. She tells him about the Jedi and that it's his duty to protect the child. You expect me to search the galaxy for the home of this creature and deliver it to a race of enemy sorcerers? She also gives him a sweet jetpack and carves some fat lines into his shoulder. They go on a lava boat ride where IG-11 sacrifices himself for the safety of the child and the group. And Mando can fully relate to young John Connor now. Moff Gideon is bugging out and returns in his TIE fighter, but Mando, burning out his fuse up here alone, blows up that spaceship, then touchdown brings him round again to find Kara, Grief, and the child safely on the ground. <laughs> hey, that was fun! It looks like your guild rates have just gone up. Grief and Kara decide to stay on Navarro, while Mando and the child fly off into the sunset for more fun adventures throughout the galaxy. But you cannot keep a good Moff Gideon down, especially when he has a fancy dark saber. So what's next for season two? Will the Mandalorian find the child's home planet? What have Kara and Grief been up to? And how many more enemies will Mando make while searching for the Jedi? And uh, hey, that one droid in the Mos Eisley Cantina was voiced by Mark Hamill. He was in a couple Star Wars, wasn't he? Anyway, this Mandalorian will have no trouble with Sarlacc pits. or anything else for that matter, because after his adventures in season one, he has the greatest tool in all the galaxy. Nah, not, not love, a, a force-wielding super baby. Do the magic hand thing. Isn't he just adorable?